<laughs> well, good that you're joining us live online too. So, Om Namah Shivaya, a very warm welcome. We are going to start with Shavasana, so a brief relaxation. So, um, yeah, do get comfortable on your mats. Um, you can take those heels about mat width apart, let those toes drop to the side. And either place your hands, your arms at about 45 degree angle away from the body as you would usually do. Or if you want to create some space in your armpits, you can take them high at about, yeah, I don't know what kind of angle that is, but take those a lot higher up, those arms, if you want to create some space in your armpits and see if that works for you, okay? So just take a few moments to place your physical body, your physical frame in Shavasana for a brief initial relaxation before we make a start. Checking that your head is in line with your spine and that your lower back is really soft and comfortable, okay? If necessary, place some cushions underneath your slightly bent knees so that may relax the lower back. And let the breath help you arrive within this physical body, within this physical frame. Inhaling, you notice how that abdomen is rising. And as you exhale, the abdomen is sinking back down again. Inhaling, abdomen rising. And exhaling, perhaps a feeling that not only the abdomen, but the entire physical body is sinking down, melting into the mat. As you take a couple more deep breaths in your Shavasana to fully arrive with your body, your mind, with the help of your breath to be fully present now here on your yoga mat in Shavasana. Become aware of the physical body from the inside out. Become aware of your soles of the feet. Moving up to your ankle joints, your lower legs, your knee joints, your upper legs, your thighs, all the way to your hip joints. Be aware of the abdomen, the lower back, the chest and the upper back, the back of the hands, lower arms, elbow joints, upper arms, shoulder joints, shoulder blades, neck, back of the head, top of the head, crown of the head, at the same time, be aware of your fingertips and the soles of your feet. That space, that physical body between the crown of the head, soles of your feet and fingertips. The whole body now relaxed. The whole body relaxed.
Returning your awareness to the physical body. Deepen your breath. Inhaling all the way down into the abdomen. And in that way, you can center yourself. Fully connecting with the breath and sending it down to the very core. Couple more deep breaths. Reminding yourself that with every breath, you're taking in fresh energy, fresh prana. And with every exhalation, you can let go of the old. And then introducing gentle movements, fingers and toes, hands and feet. Perhaps a full body stretch, taking the arms all the way over behind you and giving your body a good stretch. Or perhaps you feel like hugging the knees in. Perhaps rocking a little from side to side and turning to one side and come to sit up or rocking up using one knee. So in any case, coming up to a seated position on your Meditation cushion or any props you may need. Mm? Okay. And let's start our practice as we always do with a norm and a mantra. So coming to a comfortable upright position, sending the crown of the head all the way up towards the light. And let your feet your legs, your buttocks really melt down. Feel that strong connection with Mother Earth, with the ground, with your meditation cushion. The hands relaxed either on the knees, the thighs, the lap. The shoulders down and back, chest open. Inhaling deeply. And exhaling completely. Inhale for Om. Om. Satoma Satgamaya Tamasoma Jotir Gamaya Mretio Mamretam Gamaya Om Shanti 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 Om Peace Peace Om Namah Shivaya. A very warm welcome to our English Yin Yoga class today. My name is Kaivalya. I'm staff here at Yoga Vidya in Bad Meinberg. And yeah, it's great to see so many of you here in Shivananda Hall on the mat. And it's lovely that you've decided to join us online. So as for the class today, um, just a few words about Yin Yoga. <laughs> For those of you who are not yet that familiar with it, um, it's a slow practice. It's a meditative practice. Um, it's um, a sort of soft, passive practice. Yeah, it's yin as opposed to yang. And usually, at least if you're practicing in the yoga vidya style, our yoga practice is usually quite yang. Yeah, we're working quite hard. It's Hatha Yoga. There's an effort to it. Um, whereas here in Yin Yoga, 
there's also some young element um, as we move into a pose perhaps, but once we're in the pose, we really want to emphasize that kind of letting go, that softness, that female energy. Okay, so it lovely, it's a lovely practice to complement your usual Hatha yoga practice, yeah. Um, we hold the postures for quite some time uh, and I recommend that you have some props handy. So if you're here in the room, um, at least uh, two, perhaps even three, uh, preferably round uh, cushions. Um, if you have a block at home or if you have a bolster at home, please feel free also to use that, to have that handy at any point in time during the practice. Okay, we won't be using any belts today. But yeah, you may find that um, those kind of firm cushions um, or blankets, folded blankets, will, in, will come in quite handy. Okay. All right. Well, what we'll be aiming for on a physical level with the yoga practice is to reach our uh, connective tissue, our fascia. So rather than working with the muscles, we'll be trying to target those connective tissues. Okay. Um, and one reason to kind of help us to get to that is that we won't be uh, having a warm up as we would usually do in a hatha yoga practice. Um, we'll kind of dive straight in, but, uh, and that's uh, generally quite a helpful advice, um, please tr don't try and go into pose 100%, yeah? Perhaps kind of aim for 60, 70% to start with and then see what unfolds, yeah? It's all a kind of, it's all about the unfolding to kind of see what's happening. Okay, so I invite you to that kind of practice. Um, today we'll be practicing um, yin yoga in the sort of yoga vidya style. So we'll have more or less a yoga vidya sequence uh, in a yin style. Okay. All right, so that was quite a lot of talking. So let's get practicing. <laughs> um, we will, won't do the usual pranayama the usual breath work, but we'll do a kind of gentle movement using our breath. We'll start with a Sufi grind. So uh, get into a comfortable cross-legged position if that is possible for you. Otherwise, yeah, do adjust. Um, also do support your knees if necessary so that you come to a comfortable cross-legged position. And with a Sufi grind, um, you can place your hands on your knees, on your thighs, and you inhale, you send the chest and the whole body forward. And as you exhale, you make a round back and you move back as much as possible. And you do that in your own time. So inhaling forward, chest bone forward, exhaling round back, all the way back. And you're drawing big circles from the hips. Really check what kind of movement is possible here. Both legs firmly connected with the ground, both buttocks, and really focus on the breath. Inhale as you move forward. Exhale as you make a round back. You can close your eyes and just really fully connect with your body, with your breath, and make that a smooth circle, a smooth movement. Breathing perhaps all the way down into the hips, the hip joints, that kind of area. Sometimes we tend to hold stuff there, emotional stuff, memories, anything we haven't yet been able to digest. Full focus on that movement, slow and even circles. One final round in this direction. Uh, 
And with the next breath, then changing your direction. And again, fully tuned in to that movement, which is guided by the breath. Let that breath and that movement help you to be fully present in this moment, right here, right now. Absorbed with your body, your mind in this movement, in this moment. Couple of final rounds, take your time. One final movement now, as you come slowly, slowly to stillness, just sitting upright with your eyes closed for a moment, sending the awareness to that area we've been working with. Perhaps there's a sensation of warmth just notice what's what's happening within your physical body, also in your mind, perhaps. Watching like a witness. Om. Okay. All right, then. I'd like to just turn our awareness to those fascia, those connective tissue. So you can come to sit on your heels, if that's possible for you. Um, any kind of knee issues, you can also place a folded blanket underneath your knees or fold your mat, so make sure that your knees are all right. And we're going to be starting off with uh, the fascia starting in our feet. So usually we're neglecting those a little bit. So you can prop your toes up, so tuck your toes under, and gently, gently sit back if that's at all possible for you. Now, if that is hugely painful, please don't do that. You can then take your hands in front of you and just gently, gently apply a little bit of weight towards the feet. But those of you who can, do sit back and you'll probably notice a little bit of a stretch in your feet, perhaps a, a gentle twinge now, as I said, if that is really painful, then do take the weight off a little bit. But a little pain is okay. We do want to kind of open and stretch our feet here. Okay, so breathing into those feet, the toes, the soles of your feet, as you hold the pose for a little longer. If you wish, you can make... Garuda arms, so taking the right arm on top of the other, wrapping those around each other, and then placing the palms of the hands together as much as you can. You can take those elbows a little higher or a little lower. Just see what's kind of happening in the shoulder girdle as you work with that. And keep on breathing here towards the soles of the feet, the toes, the shoulder girdle. Really opening here, those areas of the body.
Now, if you're working with the arms, swapping them round, so taking the left one on top of the right, placing the palms together again and again, you can see what kind of works for you, whether you wish to take the elbows a little higher, a little further down. See that there's something happening in the shoulder, shoulder blades, shoulder girdle. Couple more breaths here. Last breath here. And then let go of your arms, taking the weight forward, placing the hands in front of you on the mat. And gently, gently, gently taking the feet down, sitting back on your heels. If that's comfortable, otherwise do feel free to take a cushion here to support you. Just sitting back up again. Breathing towards the feet, the toes, the fascia starting in the feet here. And something we're not working with that often. So, yeah, you might feel that you may wish to integrate that in your practice every now and then. Okay, as I mentioned then, we are using the Yoga Vidya sequence as a rough guideline as we move through our yin yoga class. So we'll start with an inversion, a gently supported version. Um, now in yin yoga, the asanas have different names, so we were practicing the seagrass to start with, but you may very well be familiar with that as a supported shoulder stand or Viparita Karni. So I'll show you two asanas before I'll guide you into them, uh, just so that once you're in the pose, you're not able to see me probably. So I'll show you two to start with. So we, we'll start with a seagrass, the supported shoulder stand. So placing a firm cushion underneath your sacrum, just making sure that it sits very neatly, very nicely and then taking your legs up and placing your arms in such a way that you can really relax. So that's the seagrass and we will be holding this pose for some time. And then you'll have the option to move a little further to the snail. So you, that's a little bit like a kind of very gentle plow pose which would be following our shoulder stand. So you can take the uh, bent knees towards the forehead and move your support, your cushion, a little further up. Rather than having that at the lower back, the sacrum, it now sits more towards the upper back. Okay, so that will be the second asana. Yeah, so first the sea cross, then the snail. And I'll talk you through it. So this was just to show you, for those of you who are not yet that familiar with the terms, and as you come out of the pose, you lift the hips and you take the pillow, uh, the, the cushion from underneath you. All right. So placing your feet now on the mat, lifting your hips up, and place your cushion underneath the sacrum. Okay. So upper body is on the mat, lifting the hips and placing the sacrum, placing the cushion underneath the sacrum. Lift your legs up and just take a little while here to kind of adjust that support. So this is a very gentle inversion. Um, great, okay. Placing those hands, those arms on the, the floor. Let those completely relax. And just play with your legs and your feet, perhaps moving them 
ever so slightly in a micro, micro, micro movement to see where that is, where you have that point where your legs are just floating up. And there's hardly any effort of holding them. Yeah, it's a kind of almost balancing within the joint. Okay, so legs up and you're finding that point where they almost float effortlessly. So you've now arrived in the seagrass position, supported shoulder stand. And use your breath to stay fully present during your practice. If you catch your mind from wondering, one helpful tool, tool we have is to bring the awareness to the breath. So perhaps you notice that cool air streaming in through the nostrils that slightly warmer, moister air leaving the nostrils again. So you may find that helpful to just keep that mind from wandering. Or perhaps you find it very helpful to scan the body from the inside out. Again, this is just an invitation Noticing whether there's any parts of your body where you're still holding on to something. That may be your tongue or your jaws. Let the tongue relax. The jaws are soft. And the forehead is all smooth. The scalp is relaxed. Having arrived in this pose as you hold it for several more breaths, I'd like you to give you a, an inspiration from the Bhagavad Gita about the divine. Krishna telling us that I am the source of all spiritual and material universes for everything emanates from me. Knowing this, the wise engage in my devotional service and worship me with all their hearts. You can use that practice of yours, the yin yoga practice today also, as a kind of worship gratitude towards the body. And gratitude for your being, and being part of this beautiful universe. as you hold the pose for five or six more slow breaths in silence. One final breath here. And gently, gently bending your knees towards the forehead. 
And as I've shown you, then gently moving your cushion towards the upper back. So you're supporting yourself, coming to the snail. It's a very gentle, passive plow pose. So if one cushion isn't enough here, perhaps you wish to take a second one, just make sure that you're nicely supported again. Okay, so there's no holding on to anything. You're nicely supporting yourself and let the weight of the gently bent legs guide you into the snail. Placing the hands and arms on the mat, wherever that is now, or on the floor, wherever it's comfortable for you. And with that image of the snail, you're also kind of withdrawing within. So if your body is that little house, the snail is retreat, uh, using as a kind of place to retreat from the world, just withdrawing the senses inwards. And again, using the breath as a focal point in case you find that your mind is no longer on the mat. Uh, sometimes we have that in our yoga practice, that the physical frame, our body is on the mat, and the mind is completely elsewhere. So if you at any point catch your mind from wandering, return to the breath, perhaps the nostrils, as a focal point, if you find that helpful. And that withdrawal of the senses, the so-called pratyahara, is one of the steps we use towards meditation also. And we can use that also in our physical yoga practice. It's a kind of withdrawing from the senses radiating outwards. Instead, we're diving within. And the yin yoga practice in particular is also a, an opportunity for you to dive within. To really look and feel what's there. Noticing whatever is, like a witness, with a loving kindness, observing whatever now is as you hold the pose for five more breaths. Taking a final breath here. And then gently guiding the legs back up again, coming back to the seagrass position for a couple more minutes. Adjusting your cushion accordingly so that you're well supported again. One final breath here. Then bend your knees. Place the soles of the feet on the mat. 
and lift your hips up as you then gently, gently pull the cushion out from underneath the body, placing the hips back on the mat, taking the feet wide and let the knees drop to the middle or if you prefer to stretch the legs out, feel free to do so. So coming into a relaxing pose for the rebound. Again, an invitation to watch and observe what is now happening, what is now unfolding, what has been unfolding during that inversion. Again here, hold the awareness of the breath or focal point of your choice if you find that your mind is wandering. We do have those little monkey minds jumping about. And this is an opportunity to slow down to really, really slow down. And that comes with practice as almost everything. And gently bend your knees, hug them into the body. And if you wish, you can gently rock from side to side, massaging the lower back. And turn to one side and use your hands, your arms to help sit up. to prepare for a passive fish. So if you have those firm round cushions, do use those. You may need three of them. If you have a bolster at home, you can use that as well. So actually I've got one more here if, you, if we are short here. <laughs> Feel free to use that. <laughs> okay, so what we want to kind of aim for is a nice support for a passive fish. And you place your, your buttocks in front of that support and you very, very gently guide the body, the upper body to lie on um, that support. You have a choice here with the legs. You can stretch the legs out. That's one option. Or if you prefer the butterfly, and if your hips are nicely open, that might be possible just like that. Or alternatively, place the soles of the feet together in the butterfly and support those knees. Okay, so that's up to you. And again, if you find that this is not comfortable for your neck, then again, you may wish to perhaps have a little support here for the head. So you, you really, it's very individual here how you wish to place your physical body in this pose, okay? So make sure that you use the props your body needs so that once you find that point where everything is comfortable, you can move into that stillness and just see what unfolds, okay? So using those first few moments to really adjust till you find a passive fish which enables you to open your whole kind of chest area, the whole rib cage, the heart space in a very comfortable yin way. So 
using that first minute or the first couple of minutes to adjust so that the physical body can then find that comfort, that comfortable pose. Okay, so you hold the pose again for several minutes now that you've found your comfortable passive fish pose. Okay. Very nice. And perhaps automatically your awareness is drawn to that heart space, to that chest area, which is now nicely open. Okay, and those of you who are in the butterfly also, there's an entire opening of the front side of the body. And we don't always let that happen. Yeah, we often try and protect that precious front side of the body. So now there's a complete opening and uh, that's got to do with trust and with this certainty that there's a, a safe space where you can fully open up. I'd like to you to share. I like to share once again uh, an inspiration from the Bhagavad Gita with you about this protection which we all enjoy because we are just being held by Mother Earth. We are part of this di divine, that divinity. Mm, for those of you. For those who worship me with devotion, meditation on my transcendental form, I carry what they lack and preserve what they have, both materially and spiritually. So we can all be sure of that protection which we enjoy. that divine light which surrounds us and which we are part of. And it helps us to feel that, to be aware of that when we open our heart space, when we open ourselves to love and joy Empathy, compassion, through that openness in the heart space, we feel that connection with others, that we are part of it all. you wish you can also visualize light streaming down from above entering your heart space or just guiding the breath towards the heart space as you hold the pose for one more minute in silence.
couple of breaths. And gently turn to one side, just very slowly, so if in slow motion. And pull out the support from underneath the body and place your body again in Shavasana. So coming to a perhaps supported supine position, lying on your back for the rebound and again with an almost childlike curiosity just sending the awareness to the physical frame, the body, to the heart space or perhaps also towards your emotions, to the much towards the mind and just watch and observe what's happening. What's going on? And you can remain on your back, bending now one knee and then the other, placing the feet initially on the mat in the semi-supine position. And we're going to come to the very famous happy baby pose. So you take your feet, the soles of the feet to face the ceiling. So the soles of the feet facing upwards and the knees towards the armpit and see if you can grab hold of the outside of your feet or alternatively your ankles, your shins. So see that what's possible here. And you're bending those knees and sending them towards the armpits. So sending them wide. Once again, we're opening that whole kind of hip area here. Perhaps you notice your buttocks, back of the legs, hamstrings, your thighs, your hips, just kind of see where you notice that gentle stretch and that gentle opening as you come to the happy baby pose here. If you find that your head cannot relax, comfortably on the mat, you can support that head with a fold-up blanket perhaps and just see if perhaps you're too, there's too much of a holding on to, so again you can support also your knees or thighs or if you keep falling to one side, just support your buttocks there. So the first couple of minutes again See that you're arriving in a comfortable pose which you can hold in a yin way, in a really soft and relaxing sort of way. Breathing towards those hips, that whole opening of that area, the back of the legs, the buttocks. Also observe whether you're holding on to your shoulders. Those can relax completely, as well as your jaws and your tongue and the forehead. As you hold the pose for another couple of minutes.
try and resist if the body wants to make movements, just see what's kind of unfolding on a deeper level. With a curious, open mind. couple of final breaths here in your happy baby pose. And then gently come out of the pose, bending the knees, placing the soles of your feet back on the mat again, as if in slow motion. And if you wish, you can stretch the legs out again, coming to Shavasana, come to lie on your back, let go of your arms, let those rest on the floor. Once again, with a curious open mind, just watch what's been unfolding. We'll come to the eye of needle next. So we'll stay with on the back and you can place the, uh, you can bend both knees, placing the soles of the feet on the mat, the heels relatively close to the buttocks, placing your right ankle on top of the left knee and then bringing that left knee towards the body and you're kind of threading that right arm through that opening underneath the right leg, grabbing hold of the left knee or shin, or if that's not possible, underneath the knee joint, your, the back of the thigh. So grabbing hold of the left leg and drawing both legs towards you right ankle on top of the left knee. And if you find that your head is floating, supporting your head a little here, okay? And if you find that you're rolling over to the right hand side, you can put a cushion underneath or towards the right buttocks so that you're not rolling over to the right hand side. And again, you're breathing towards that kind of hip area. This is called the eye of needle. So again, we're working here with a hip area where we often subconsciously hold on to stuff and now let's see if we can unfold, come all soft. And again, if other parts of the body are tense, such as the forehead or the jaws or the tongue, let those become really smooth and soft. Also the shoulders, let those be all soft. Breathing towards areas where you feel that you're still holding on to something. Mm. 
And if you feel there's more softness, perhaps you very gently wish to guide that left knee a little further towards your body, intensifying the back, the, the stretch at the back of the right buttocks, the thigh. Just gently, lovingly see what's unfolding. couple of more breaths here on this side. With the next exhalation, placing the left foot back on the mat, taking the right foot down, taking the feet wide about mat width apart, let the knees drop to the center. And just notice how that right-hand side is feeling in comparison to the left-hand side. Whether there's a sense of lopsidedness. Whether there's any kind of difference at all. And then we come to practice on the other side. So this time placing the left ankle top of the right knee and drawing that right knee towards the body. Again, threading the now the arm, this time the left hand through that kind of eye of needle and grabbing hold of the right knee or shin or underneath the, backs, or the back of the thigh, just drawing that right knee towards the body. Again, supporting yourself if you need to and breathing towards that target area. This time the left buttocks, back of the thigh, the whole hip area here, guiding the breath towards that area. And with the exhalation, introducing more and more softness. Again, Lovely knee, checking for yourself whether the forehead is smooth, the jaws are relaxed, the tongue is soft and heavy in the mouth, and the shoulders are all heavy and soft. There's just a gentle guiding of the knee towards your body, and you're breathing into the stretch. Two more breaths here. As you exhale, place your right foot back on the mat, taking the feet wide and let the knees meet in the middle. So coming to a semi-supine position the arms relaxed on the mat. If you wish, you can take them a little higher so you're creating space in your armpits. For the rebound, just stay here for a few breaths. And perhaps you notice what's going on with your thoughts with your emotions as you're really slowing down. See if that perhaps also triggers the mind to be even more active or at least you become more aware of that activity of the mind, that restlessness. Finding a focal point again, the breath.
and hug your knee, one knee in and come to rock up gently or turn to one side and sit up in that way. So come to sit up. We'll do a forward bend now. So I thought we'll do the, in yin yoga, we'll have the dragonfly. So you'll take your feet wide to a comfortable wide, okay? Um, you can lean forward a little bit, adjusting your buttocks, but don't pull the buttocks out from underneath. You just do that in a kind of gentle way, just wiggling about a little bit so that you notice your sitting bones pushing into the floor. And once again, grab hold of your props, so whatever you have handy, your cushions. You can also, uh, we're coming into a forward bend in a moment, so if you know that your forward bend isn't that deep, if there isn't that much flexibility in your hips, you can build that <laughs> little pile of cushions quite high, okay? so. There's no limit to that. <laughs> well, almost no limit. Okay. Um, and we'll come into the pose with a bit of a young element. So we'll lift the arms up, inhaling here, inhaling towards the hip joints. And then come to move forward with the breastbone. Come to bend forward here. And notice then where that movement stops, not forcing anything, but just kind of adjusting your props in such a way that there is a, a melting into the pose again, okay? So you may feel that you now need to adjust your pile of cushions, either build it higher or take a couple of cushions down to really see what is possible here. Nicely supported. You come into that forward bend. You, once again, you can adjust that first, you can use that first minute to adjust your props accordingly. Uh, I find it really helpful to support my forehead here. So I try and place a prop in front of me in such a way that I can place my forehead on top of that prop that cushion perhaps, that block if you have one handy. And you may feel now that stretch of the hamstrings, that stretch the back of the legs, breathing towards that gentle, and it ought to be a gentle stretch. Okay, so no intensive pain, we want to avoid that. It's just a gentle, almost enjoyable little twinge or pain, but still <laughs> enjoyable. Okay, so you're breathing towards that stretch of the hamstrings. And you let your, your hands, your shoulders fully relax. So place them in such a way that the elbow joints are bent, that the shoulders can become all soft. And the entire physical body is melting into that shape. As you hold this shape for a couple more minutes, having supported yourself nicely here, enjoying a yin dragonfly once again, with a curious, almost childlike curiosity, just watch what's unfolding. You're stretching and opening the entire back of the body, the hamstrings, back of the back all the way, the fascia is moving, uh, the fascia is all the way at the back of the body, all the way to the head, 
So let that head be all heavy and let gravity guide you into this pose. And in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna tells us about the so-called success in yoga. Be steadfast in yoga. Perform your duty without attachment, re remaining equal to success or failure. Such equanimity of mind is called yoga. So perhaps using that as an inspiration, whether we are successful or we fail, if we want to judge it like that, yeah, we remain uh, detached from that. And that's our goal in yoga, the equanimity of mind, that calmness. And sometimes a forward bend, such as the dragonfly, can help us with that because there's a kind of surrendering and acceptance of whatever is. Sometimes the forward bend is also described as a kind of devotional arsenal. There's that element of prostrating in front of the divine. Couple more breaths in your forward bend. And then prepare to come out of the pose very slowly, very mindfully. So use your hands, placing the palms of the hands on the mat in front of you. And gently, gently guide your upper body up. Small micro movements as you sit back up. Gently, gently, gently. Move your props to the side. And I find it helpful to help my legs back up. So I guide those knees back up using my hands guiding them together, the feet together. Well, actually the feet about mat width apart will do a bit of a, an active counter pose with a windscreen swiper. So you move from one side to the other, taking the knee all the way down and taking that those hips into the movement, just a couple of times here to each side and then come to lie on your abdomen making a little pillow with your hands placing the forehead or the cheek the temple on your little pillow here if you wish you can take the feet wide And here, once again, use the exhalation to melt into the mat. So, so with every exhalation, there's more and more softness which you're inviting. Perhaps also it, you find it helpful to send the awareness to the abdominal area, whereas you inhale, the abdomen is gently pushing against the mat. And as you exhale, there's softness with every exhalation, more and more softness. Mm. 
Taking your feet wide, you gently come up with your up head and upper body for the back bend. We'll do a swings here. So you're placing the elbows approximately underneath your shoulders. You can take the hands a little wider, spreading the fingers and come to a comfortable swings pose here. If you find it more helpful, you can also place a cushion under your chest. Well, sometimes that is also quite helpful here to come into a swings pose and just make sure that there isn't too much compression here in the lower back. So make sure that the lower back is still comfortable. There will be a compression here, which should be a very comfortable one. Okay, so coming to a swings pose, taking the feet wide and support yourself here so that once you've arrived in the swings pose, you can relax in the shoulders and the elbows and upper arms are kind of holding you almost effortlessly in this pose. Opening your heart space here and by gently lifting the head up there's also an opening of the throat area and there's a kind of sending the forehead a little forward and upwards. So on an energetic level we're also kind of working with the heart chakra throat chakra, forehead, third eye chakra. Again, the kind of spiritual level, this back bend here, the sphinx in this case, sometimes described as a, an asana for spiritual striving as we're kind of moving forwards and upwards towards the light. But in our yin practice, it's not so much hard work and the emphasis not on the effort, but the emphasis is on the whatever's unfolding. Now you can hold this pose for one more minute or if you prefer to go one step further, you can come to the seal. So in that case, you're pushing your palms into the mat and you come up a little further again noticing that this is a comfortable compression here for the lower back you come to the seal and you hold the seal for six slow breaths striving forwards and upwards pubic bone in the mat Two more breaths here if you find this enjoyable. Otherwise, do at any point return to the Sphinx. Final breath, nice and slow. Removing any support you may have worked with and exhaling vertebra by vertebra, coming out of the pose in slow motion, placing your forehead, your temple back on your little pillow, your, li your hands. As always, 
watching, observing with a loving, open-minded kindness towards the body, towards your emotional level, towards the mind. Just observing what is. Oh, your yoga practice is that opportunity and that invitation to enjoy that space where there's just being. There isn't that much doing. It's just a simple being. And as we have taken the, the very basics of the yoga vidya sequence as our guideline for our yin class, you can now roll round on your back. So you're not sitting up, but you're just rolling round. So you're lying on your back again for our twist. So we'll do the twisted roots, so you can come to a semi-supine position, placing your sole, the feet on the mat, heels fairly close to the buttocks, and you're wrapping your right leg round the left one. So you're taking the right leg on top of the left, and then you're wrapping your right foot round the left leg, if that's possible. So tucking it kind of under, it's kind of Garuda, if you're familiar with Garuda Asana, it's Garuda legs in this case. And then you place the left sole of, sole of the foot back on the mat again, so the right leg is now wrapped around the left one. And with the next exhalation, you'll take both legs to the left, coming into a twist. And here you may find props useful, so hopefully you have a couple of your cushions handy. You can support your right knee with a cushion here. You can also support your back and push a cushion into the small of the back here, the lower back, so that you're not rolling out of the twist. Again, use that first minute to adjust the physical body, to support the physical body in such a way that you can enjoy this lying twist, the twist at roots. Taking the arms, perhaps shoulder height, just see what works for you here, creating space in your armpits, opening the armpits, palms facing up and your head is turning to the other side. So. Legs to the left, head towards the right. And you've arrived in your lying twist. Nicely supported. The emphasis on the exhalation. So you're inviting more and more softness. Perhaps you like the image of inhaling white bright light and exhaling any kind of toxins or anything you wish to let go of so that there's a gray light, gray fog leaving your nostrils. Inhaling bright light from above and exhaling gray smoke. Oh, that twist is always a nice detoxing element in our practice. You're wringing yourself out. All the physical organs are being squeezed, stimulated, and like a wet, damp cloth, you're kind of wringing yourself out. Anything you no longer wish to hold on to, with the exhalation, just let go of that. 
That might also be a memory or an emotion. Or perhaps a behavioral pattern which you wish to work with. With the exhalation, let go. The exhalation, there's more and more acceptance. Two more breaths on this side. Removing the prop in your lower back if you've used that. And as you inhale, return to the center. Exhale, releasing that right foot placing both feet wide and let the knees meet in the middle, coming to a relaxed semi-supine position. Knees bent. Once again, perhaps there's a feeling of feeling lopsided now that you've practiced only one side. You feel that you really do need to practice the other one, so that's what we shall do. So wrapping the other leg, this time the left leg round the right one, left on top of the right, and then tucking the left foot, the left toes, and wrapping them round the right leg. Coming into a twisted root, so turning this time with the knees towards the right and the head towards the left. Again, do use your support if you find that useful, supporting the left, put it, placing a support underneath the left knee perhaps, and perhaps in the lower back so that you're not rolling out of this twist. And turning with your head towards the other direction. Placing the hands, the arms in such a way on the mat, on the floor, that there's space and air circulating underneath your armpits. Both shoulders on the mat, shoulder blades. Eyes closed. You once again become aware of the exhalation. And if you wish, you can work with that image. Bright white light entering your body, each and every cell. And as you exhale, there's gray smoke leaving the body. Enjoying this twist as a kind of detoxing pose. On a physical level here, Stimulating the organs the in your abdominal area. Perhaps you're also aware that there's also things happening on the more subtler levels, not just the physical one. But with our yoga practice, we automatically also work with those subtle levels the mental, emotional one as well as the energetic one. With each exhalation, there's an acceptance. With each exhalation, as a more and more simple state of being.
Two final breaths now. Removing any support and as you inhale, you return to the center. Exhale. You let go and you gently melt into a Shavasana pose. Come to lie on your back using any support, any props you may need for your final relaxation. Using a blanket or whatever you need now to enjoy a few minutes in Shavasana, final relaxation. Every time ensuring that this physical body can relax. The heels wide, head in line with your spine. Taking the arms as wide as you wish to, palms if possible facing up, enabling the heart space to open. Double checking whether your jaws are soft and the tongue is also heavy and relaxed in the mouth. The forehead is smooth. And as you've placed your physical body in Shavasana for your final relaxation, once again bring the awareness to the breath every exhalation there's a melting into the mat For every exhalation there's acceptance and letting go bringing the awareness to your feet the soles of your feet and from there, there a sensation of relaxation perhaps in the form of warmth or vis visualization of light as traveling upwards filling both feet to the ankle joints and moving up further filling the lower legs to the knee joints Travelling up even further, filling both thighs to the hip joints. So both legs and are filled with a sensation of relaxation, with warmth, with light, perhaps also heaviness. And that sensation is travelling upwards, filling the torso to the belly button, Travelling up further, filling the whole rib cage, the heart space, all the way to the shoulders. So the whole torso now filled with warmth and light, or heaviness and a sensation of relaxation. Guiding your awareness then to your fingertips. And from there, that sensation is traveling upwards, filling both hands to the wrist joints, lower arms to the elbow joints, upper arms to the shoulder joints, traveling up the neck, filling the head all the way to the crown of the head. The whole body now filled with warmth, with light, perhaps a sensation of heaviness, a sensation of relaxation. And you're aware of the whole physical body from the soles of your feet, 
to the crown of the head, to the fingertips, the whole body, the whole body. And in the Bhagavad Gita, there's that beautiful image of pearls on a thread that the divine is holding everything together. Everything, including us, like pearls on a string. We're being connected and held together with everything else in this universe. Know for certain that whatever is found in this creation arises out of the combination of my material and spiritual energies. I am the origin and the dissolution of all. There is nothing beyond me. Everything rests upon me as pearls are strung on a thread. And you can enjoy that sensation of relaxation and sensation of union and being part of that greater oneness for a few moments in silence.
awareness back to the physical body, to the breath. Deepen your breath, sending it all the way down to the abdomen. Centering yourself there. Feeling the firmness of the ground beneath you. Reminding yourself that you're well supported and cared for. Introducing small movements, wiggling fingers and toes, arms and legs, perhaps a full body stretch, perhaps the knees to the chest, a few movements which are now good for you. Perhaps rolling to one side, or if you wish, feel free to rock up for a closing Aum and Mantra to seal our practice for today. So coming to a seated, comfortable, upright position. Sending the crown of the head upwards. At the same time, be aware of your feet, your legs, your buttocks, your sit bo sitting bones, firmly grounded, well connected with Mother Earth. Inhaling deeply all the way down to the abdomen. And exhaling completely. Inhale for Aum. Samasta Sukino Pavantu Loka Samasta Sukino Pavantu Loka Samasta Sukino Pavantu May all beings be happy and free. Om Shanti 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 Om Peace 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 Om Lo Satguru Shivananda Maharaj Ki Jai Om Sarva Santana Ki Jai Thank you for your practice today, for sharing it. Hope you're well. Do drink lots, after, especially after your yin yoga practice, to kind of flush out all that wants to be flushed out. Okay, we've been working with deeper levels, not just the connective tissues, but yeah, tissue. Okay, if you've joined us online, thank you very much. Do check out our online program. Also, we are open again, so come and join us here in Shivananda Hall. We've got lovely seminars lined up for the summer. So yeah, hope. You're well. Do take care. Much love. Om Namah Shivaya. <laughs>